before starting, I would like to know how many of you are actually working on Grails 3? Can I see raise of hands? Not many. All right. So today we are going to talk about uh, giving back to the community. And uh, though there are lots of ways to contribute, like you could uh, update documentation, and uh, another is you could migrate plugins or fix bugs or report add test cases. So today we are going to see uh, how can we migrate uh, plugins from Grails 2 to Grails 3. Uh, a little bit about me. My name is Puneet Behel. Uh, I'm an associate tech lead at To The New Digital uh, and uh, following are my GitHub and email address. A little bit more about me. Uh, I'm working on Groovy and Rails from last four years. Uh, I'm always very excited about uh, how can I contribute to the community or is there a way. Uh, and yeah, I'm also a little bit active on Rails Slack. Enough about me. Uh, here's the agenda for today. Uh, We'll start with the background of how it all started. That, and uh, next we will see uh, uh, some important things we need to consider before migrating the plugins. And uh, after that, we'll dive into the migration. And uh, yeah, we'll publish it and see what are the some useful tips and tricks. Uh, how it all started. Uh, Few of my colleagues visited a great conf last year, and uh, there was a lot of buzz around it, like Grails 3 came in, and a uh, lot of concerns, questions, and improvements were there. So I was so excited about it, and what I did next was I downloaded the Grails and tried to uh, migrate my existing application to Grails 3. And I was so happy about it, yeah, I can do it, I can do it, and uh, within the next few minutes I realized, hey, Stop. You cannot do it. Uh, the plugins are not working anymore. Later I realized that we need to migrate the plugins as well. Now that has become the biggest question to me that there are lots of plugins and if all these are migrated, all these needs to be migrated? Yes. And the next question is who is going to migrate it? Uh, few of us are concerned but for me I thought it's a great chance for me. Let's uh, try to just uh, start migrating the plugins. Though I'm not a Grails expert. Just FYI. So I just went, uh, I just wanted to do it, and I just uh, picked up the very easy plugin from one of my project. And I was, I, next step I did, I went to the Grails documentation and uh, followed the steps which they had. And I really appreciate the folks who up created the Grails doc. It's so easy to follow the steps and uh, know a lot of things about it. So it took me a time, but uh, after some time, I was able to successfully migrate it, and I was so happy about it. Yay, I did one migration and a contribution. So cool. So later, I picked up a few more plugins, and uh, there were some issues and challenges in each one of them. But uh, eventually, I started contributing, and uh, yeah, that's how it all started. Uh, what so far, we, I personally have migrated eight to nine plugins to Grails 3, uh, including Joda Time, RabbitMQ, Elasticsearch. I'm also maintaining Elasticsearch plugin. And uh, we recently organized a workshop in our organization, uh, a whole day, uh, uh, where we, we, I did the same thing, the presenter, and uh, after that we've picked up few plugins and started migrating it. And uh, we were able to migrate seven to eight plugins in a day. And uh, next step, uh, uh, so far we have migrated 21 plus plugins to Grails 3 as a team. Next, right. let's talk about things uh, before migration. Most of you already know because there were already some talks about migrating plugins or creating plugins in Grails 3. Uh, interceptors are being removed and so the filters, so you need to take care of that. Uh, your before and after interceptors are being replaced with uh, uh, controller level in, uh, interceptors or a global interceptor where you could use match all and user objects over there. Next is uh, project structure. There are some changes in the structure of the project. Uh, in Grails 3, we'll see in the later slides what are the changes. 
uh, file locations, some files are being removed, some files are being uh, moved to different locations. Uh, configurations, uh, there are some changes in the config, how we define build configuration and application configuration as well. Uh, some packages are being renamed or some are actually removed, so you need to watch for it. But uh, yeah, again, you can, thanks to community, you can just uh, go to the Grail Slack and just type it, hey, how should I do it? And I hope you'll, I, I'm sure you'll get reply by end of the day. Yeah. So Gantt scripts are being removed and uh, Grail build system has been introduced. So yeah. So file location differences, uh, build configuration, all the build related configurations are being moved to build.gradle. Uh, your config data source uh, related configurations are being moved to application.groovy and uh, URL mappings uh, is being moved from uh, config to controller folder, Grails app controller and uh, bootstrap is also moved to init folder inside Grails app. So scripts are being moved to SRC main script, Groovy and Java, all the files are being moved to SRC main Groovy, you could have Java as well. Uh, all your test cases uh, are being moved from root test slash unit to SRC main test for unit test and SRC main integration test for integration test. Plugin descriptor is being moved from root of the project to uh, SRC main Groovy folder. Uh, some of the new files introduced in Grails 3, build.gradle, we already talked about it. It contains all your build related configurations. Uh, if you have ever worked on Spring Boot or Gradle project, you know what we need to do here. Uh, we'll see in the later slides how we can move from our build configuration from Grails 2 to build.gradle, but we'll not explore it much. Uh, Gradle.properties, it contains version and of your Gradle and Grails application. Uh, Logback, uh, Log4j has been removed, so Logback has been introduced, so you need to take care of that, how there, there will be some changes related to this. Your log configuration needs to be defined in logback.groovy rather than config.groovy or application.groovy in Grails 3. Uh, you could have both application.yml and Groovy or just uh, personal preference, what you want to use. Uh, there is a new file, application.groovy. Uh, it is, uh, as we know that Grails 3 application is actually a Spring Boot application and this is the class which is used to start the application. Okay, file which are being removed from Grails 3, uh, application.properties, uh, data source, lib folder, application context, web.xml, site mesh, and TLDs. So you can also refer to the documentation for in-depth detail of uh, how we can work on it, like uh, your web.xml is being, can be used by Spring, and similarly application context uh, related changes can be defined in resources.groovy. Right. So, yeah, that is it about the changes. Uh, let's, uh, I personally prefer a few uh, things before actually starting the migration of the plugin. Uh, let's see what are these. So I hope I know you, most of us are waiting for plugins to be migrated, or we are migrating some existing plugins. So you just go to the GitHub and fork the existing repository, uh, star it, watch it, so that every conversation you are being notified of, and uh, create an issue in the plugin GitHub repository that you are working on it, so that people are aware of it that there is work in progress. Uh, next is uh, take a create a branch for Grails 2 version of the plugin. Uh, it's, it's again a personal preference. Some people, some people use Grails 2.x convention and push it to the GitHub repository. Some use the version of uh, the series of your current plugin version, like 10x in case it's series for Grails 2 and 20x for Grails 3, or master for Grails 3, yeah. Uh, let's get started. <coughs> Can I just, just give me a second to mirror my displays. It's getting very hard to do. Oh, 
Cool. <coughs> so, yeah. So the very first step we'll do, <coughs> we'll create, um, make sure that we are using the latest version of, the, can you see the font? Or should I need to increase it? It's OK. <clears throat> SDK, I'm using SDK man for men using Rails, so just <clears throat> make sure I'm using the latest version of the Rails. Right, cool. And <clears throat> yeah, Grails, the simple command is Grails create plugin. So today we are going to migrate, uh, see how we migrated asynchronous mail plugin, and we'll follow the steps of migration. Mail. <clears throat> Make sure the name is same as on the GitHub repository. Cool. <clears throat> All right. So we it should be here. Three hyphen three. So let's quickly go through the structure of uh, project. Uh, <clears throat> So th these are the new files which are imp uh, introduced in Grail 3, uh, build.gradle, gradle.properties, uh, uh, your configurations, logback, and application.yml. Please note that uh, your config.groovy, build config, data source config are being removed. <clears throat> There's a new init folder uh, which contains your bootstrap and your application.groovy class which we saw earlier. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. And uh, your SRC folder structure has been changed, uh, changed a little bit. So rather than SRC Groovy or SRC Java, it is SRC main Groovy or yeah Java in the same folder. And uh, <clears throat> for your test, it's not test slash unit, test slash integration. It is SRC integration test and SRC test Groovy. All right. <clears throat> Going back to the slide. Yeah, we did it. And uh, yeah. So next step will be, uh, it's, uh, there's a way that some people create a brand new application, a uh, brand new plugin, and then copies, copy the file from two version to the three, and then push it. But in that case, uh, we lose history of the plugin. I actually followed the same step, and later I realized I cannot send a pull request to the existing plugin repository. So I had to do it with, uh, either you can uh, have a workaround for a git to write on top of it, or uh, you can just follow the reverse approach where you create a bare bone Grails 3 plugin and copy the new files to Grails 2 version of the plugin. So we are going to do the same here. <clears throat> so we created a bare bone uh, project and a cloned the fork version. So here's the structure of both the plugins. So it's build.grail and the left is Grails 3 version and right is forked version, which is Grails 2. So we're going to copy the files over from this to this. All right. Okay, uh, let me see here. Mm -hmm. So, so I have already created a branch uh, Rails 10x. So how I got to new it is 10x version. So if you go to the plugin descriptor, is known as Rails plugin grep version. Yeah, it's 1.0. So for the Rails 2, I created 1.0.x and push it back. Next, I created, uh, though I can work on the master branch, but I created uh, Grails 2.0.x. Right, so the next step will be. So 
So this is the Grails2 folder. So let's just quickly copy, copy the file over from fork, uh, new to forked version. So what are the files I need to copy? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> So let's quickly copy build.gradle to demo. Grails. Yeah. And all similarly, all Gradle related files. What are the, the files which are introduced in Grails 3? Do this. All right. So once you do this, uh, you'll have. Uh, So you'll have this version of plugin. So all your Gradle files, uh, new files are in this forked version. Gradle properties, all your config files are here. Uh, application.yml, logpack, and uh, you have copied the structure of SRC. Uh, and uh, yeah, test. So this is a mess of uh, combination of Grails 2 and Grails 3. We'll do cleanup later. Yeah. So this is how it looks like. So what we did, we copied these files over. Next, we copied init folder, which contains your bootstrap and application.groovy. Next, we copied the structure of SRC. Next, your configuration files. Next, your application.groovy. Now we have, I showed you the structure. We have one forked version where it contains all the required files. So now we can easily go back and uh, delete this bare bone project. I hope I'm not deleting, yeah. We don't need this anymore. So what is the next step for us? Uh, move sources to the new location. Now we need to move all our test cases uh, from test slash unit test slash integration to SRC uh, main uh, test and SRC main uh, test uh, integration test groovy folder. So let's quickly move them over. Okay. I'm going to use IntelliJ idea for this. So where here we are. So just need to move these guys. Hmm. Just uh, drag these files over here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this should be in this folder. Yep. <coughs> yeah. So just drag these files over to this integration test folder. And uh, yeah, this guy, all unit test to the test folder. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, next, we'll move all your sources, Java and Groovy classes, to SRC main Groovy folder. And uh, yeah, next, similarly for the Java class as well. Let's move it here. All right. 
So once we do this, <clears throat> we'll have uh, out. Demo two. We'll have the structure of the primer. So now, uh, once we do this, we'll have all these configurations over there. We moved all of our integration and uh, source classes to the appropriate places from uh, test unit and integration to SRC test Groovy Grails, SRC test. Uh, so this is, and what we did so far, we moved these files over. And uh, yeah, next we moved uh, test to integration test and Groovy test classes. Now we need to move configuration. What do I mean by configuration? Uh, build config.groovy and config.groovy and data source.groovy. Yeah, oh, sorry. So uh, let's go to this guy here. So for. So there is no config.groovy. You can just rename this plugin default configuration file to application.groovy. Application.groovy. Cool. We did for application.yml. It is already there. So you have all the configurations. Let's see what is in the build dot build config.groovy. Uh, yeah, cool. We are able to maximize it. So a uh, very important thing to note here is uh, when you are migrating a plugin, make sure you went through a build config because there might be some dependencies this plugin is dependent on. For example, in case of asynchronous mail, it is dependent on Hibernate, Mail, and Quartz plugin. So we need to make sure that these are actually migrated before this plugin. So yeah, thankfully these are. So let's do the next step. <clears throat> So going back to the build config dot build dot griddle. So let's see quickly see the build dot griddle. So there is a new uh, property. Uh, there is a property version here. So you, this is the version of your. This will be the version of your plugin. So for our case, it will be 2.0. Point I just say RC1. All right. Uh, change this to uh, org dot grails dot plugin. And let's remove this Eclipse. And what next? Yeah. We need to add those uh, dependent plugin dependencies here in this place under dependency block. And also, if there are any Maven rep repositories in our Grails 2 version of the plugin, we need to copy them over here. All right. So let's just quickly copy these. <coughs> so once, uh, yeah. I can copy this over here. So I um, have a sheet. Yeah, let's just. So you need to add the latest Grails 3 version of the dependencies. For mail, it is 2.0.0.rc6. Quads, it is 2.0.9. And GPAS, it is 1 to 1. And I have an 8, it is. Yeah. So once you do this, So you'll have a, yeah, got demo three. Hmm. All right. So you'll have all your configuration in place. Uh, this will be the final build dot griddle. We have all the, just make sure we have all the dependencies. OK. What is the next step? Uh, OK. Let's quickly go back to our slides. I am not able to go. Yeah. 
hope it will not start from beginning. Yeah. So we moved uh, all. We need to move all our dependency resolution logic to uh, this repositories lot place here. Though there was nothing here, so I just keep it kept it same. You need to update these guys here, like version of the plugin and group the package. Uh, next, update the build configuration. We did it. Next, uh, there is another uh, section in uh, build.gradle which is your publish related configuration. So there is a so all our Grails three plugins are served over Bintray. So you need to have Bintray account or uh, use those configurations. So define those uh, configuration over here, like what is the GitHub repo and uh, name of developers or website URL. Yeah, this will be used by uh, Bintray uh, plugin site to have information over there. So yep, uh, default configuration is moved to application dot groovy. Next, coming to plugin descriptor. So let's see quickly see the plugin descriptor. So, oh no no no. So this is the Grails two version of plugin descriptor. What we have here is version. We don't need it anymore because we are defining it in build dot Gradle. We have plugin exclude load after. This will remain the same. Author and uh, the signature, the the style of these uh, methods has been changed. So we need to uh, update it according to the Grails three version. Uh, yeah. Next, uh, yeah. We, for for us, uh, one important thing to note here is uh, in most of the plugins there is uh, a logic in plugin descriptor to load the configuration from the default configuration file. For example, we write some config slurper and load it. So we don't need it anymore. It will be automatically read it from application.groovy. So we can safely remove this. <clears throat> so once we update the plugin descriptor, uh, let me show you the new version of plugin descriptor as well. <clears throat> yeah, this is the plugin descriptor of Grails 3 version, <clears throat> where this is the same, uh, the def Grails version, plugin excludes, documentation, license, and these are the changes in the structure of those methods. So this is changed to a method rather than a closure as compared to two version. Though you need just need to copy this section over here. Right. And similarly for other methods, just copy them over here. In addition, you need to extend the class plugin, uh, which will provide you Grails application by default. So you can just type uh, Grails application here. So it is coming from this plugin class. On top of it, uh, we need to add this uh, package declaration in the plugin descriptor. So that is it. Uh, mostly we need to do these changes. So once we do this, So this will be the final version of plugin descriptor in SRC main groovy grails plugin async mail package. <clears throat> yeah. We copied over all the do with spring logic here, application context here, and uh, these were the methods inside the older version. So we just copied them from the previous plugin descriptor. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. In addition, uh, please note that I have added a comments annotation over here. What it will gives you, as you know, the log4j is being removed. So rather than add log4j annotation, you, you just get a log uh, me log pro method in this plugin descriptor. For example, this. <clears throat> yeah. This will. For this, a log field will be inserted in a class. A field already exists, yeah. So you can, now you can do log. This will work. For this, you need to have comments annotation on plugin descriptor. So we are done with the most, uh, uh, we did most of the things, but there are a few more. We have not much time left, but yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
So what we did in the plugin descriptor, we extend the plugin descriptor with this class, uh, remove the version uh, property because it is being defined in build.gradle now. Uh, now we did most part. Let's see how it goes. Let's try to compile this. It's not working. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We have lots of errors. <clears throat> so let's go to this class. What does it say? I will resolve class. Okay, let's go to this asynchronous mail process service class. This mail process service dot Ruby. This is it. Just copy it. Right. So the problem is this class is not here anymore. So we just need to fix the import uh, persistent context interceptor. Okay. Yeah. So now this will be fixed. And similarly, there are other. Uh, issues which is asynchronous mail send service. The package has been changed from Grails plugin mail to Grails plugin s dot mail dot mail service. So once we do all these changes, uh, we should be able to compile it. So let's quickly see if after fixing these changes. Uh, do you want me to do it here? Process service. Come on. Where are you? Yeah. Asynchronous mail message builder. What? Mail message builder. Yeah. So let's just change it to. I hope this should be available now. Yep. Let's again compile it. <coughs> By the way, any questions so far, guys? Right. Oh, we have two more errors. I think those are also related to this. Mail service. <coughs> We start plugins start mail service. Yep, this is also the case. We should be able to compile it now. Yep, we are done with the compilation, which means uh, we fixed most of the issues. But wait, we have not, we are not done yet, you know. Uh, most of the plugins uh, have test cases, so we still need to make sure all the test cases are passing. And if I run the test cases here, little w check. So I am sure those will fail. So the next step will be to fix the test cases. <clears throat> so uh, I, because of the time constraint, I won't be able to do that. So I can show you the, this version of test case and what are the changes we did. <clears throat> So let's see unit test. So, so we need to change these test cases to uh, Spock test cases uh, as Grail 3 comes with Spock by default. Extends specification and uh, also all these. So once we do this, how it will look like. 
CD Grails plugins. Okay. Grails is gonna mail. Text me. <coughs> wow, it's a small, but let's see. So once you do this, oh, it is not updated here as well. Good check out master. Uh oh not anymore yep so these should be your can I zoom it can you see this can you see this clearly no okay let me copy this over this is my smell attachment service pack smell attachment test attachment tests so let me just I'm just copying over here so these are the changes you need to extend this specification class if it is a domain class or service just add test for annotation and uh, create separate test cases like given when and then I hope most of you are familiar with Spock test cases so we just need to update all the test cases to Spock so once we do this uh, we are pretty much done with the migration so and uh, next step will be to clean up the project structure, like delete this existing uh, plugin descriptor, uh, delete the conf extra configurations. Okay, and what else? Yeah, that's it. So once we are here, SDK use Grails. Use 301. Oh my god, don't worry, check. So, mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, there is uh, somehow Gradle wrapper is missing from the structure, but uh, once we have this, so you should be able to run dot slash Gradle W and uh, you should be able to run the test cases. Once the test cases are done, what are the next steps for us? Okay. <clears throat> Modify package imports, we did it already. Uh, next step is clean up. We did that checklist. So yeah, uh, checklist before sending the pull request. So you are done with. We are done with most of the steps. So just uh, remove the files. Uh, make sure unused imports are no more in the project source. Uh, all unit and integration tests or functional tests are working fine. Now what? Send pull request. So go to the GitHub uh, repository of existing plugin and. Uh, uh, go to code and there, there's an option to send a pull request. Click on this new pull request button. Next, uh, this will show you the screen where you select the base fork version. So this will be a master in case of a new migration because I already did it. That's why it is not showing master here. So this is the existing plugin repository. This is the master branch. This is my forked version of the repositories and the branch which I want to merge for Grail 3 migration. So you create a, okay, you create this, uh, a pull request will be sent to the plugin author, he merges it and publish it. But if you are the author, then next step for you would be to publish the plugin. So how you publish it, go to bintray.com, sign up uh, if you don't have an account already. Uh, the, let me show you bintray quickly. Uh, then you need to create a Maven repository under Bentray and uh, <coughs> edit your build.gridle uh, to customize default configuration and run Gridle Bentray upload. So this should upload your plugin to the Grail, publish your plugins to Grail 3 repository. So after that you should be able to, use, people should be able to download it. 
right? <clears throat> and uh, let me quickly show you Bintray. Page. Yeah, I should be logged in here. <clears throat> uh, very important step before that, this as well. Uh, Make sure once you upgrade the plugin, we are upgrading the documentation as well because for a user it is useless until the documentation is not available. So we need to make sure we are updating the documentation of the plugin as well. A uh, few tips. Uh, there is a concept of default, default configuration files in Grails 2. Uh, for that, you can create plugin.groovy or plugin. YML in Grails app config folder, which will be automatically available to your application which is using Grails plugin. We could have Travis integration uh, over the GitHub uh, so that going forward, if somebody sends a pull request, uh, it makes sure that uh, all the test cases are working fine and it'll show a beautiful icon that, hey, your build uh, test cases are passing or failing. It it, it is my personal preference to have a demo application uh, over GitHub as well with the Grails 3 version so that uh, folks can easily see uh, how to use it. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, how many of you know Grails Slack? Can I see here? Cool. So those who don't know about it, there is a Slack channel for Grails. You can go to the questions and plugins. You can ask for check whether the plugin can be migrated or not, or anybody working over it, or if you have any question, you could go over there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So once you log in to Bintray, this will be the default dashboard <coughs> landing page. So you go to this new repository. Can you see it? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Click on this new repository button name it plugins and enter all the information once you do this it will create oh man it will create uh, this guy here like plugins so now <clears throat> in addition in order to upload to the bintray you need to have uh, bintray credentials in your system you could define if you are using linux you could define those properties in bash RC or in Windows, I know, I'm not sure how to do in Windows, but you can explore that part. So once you publish it, your plugin will be listed here. For example, Elasticsearch is there and other plugins. <clears throat> so it is still not available for others to download. It is on your personal Bintray account. So you need to go to the Grails Bintray. Been trade on Grails. <clears throat> and click on include my package. Here you should be able to find your yeah, your plugins here. So you select this plugin and it'll send a request to Gram to accept it. Once he accept it, it'll be available for others to download. Yep, that is it for the plugin migration. Any questions? All right. Hope to see a lot of contribution for plugin migration. Yeah? Now that you've migrated so many uh, plugins, yeah. maybe uh, like there must be some common ground between uh, plugin and script or something. Like yeah, you're right. Yeah. I do have a bash script to do uh, all those manual steps, which I, it just for the purpose of presentation, I had those. Uh, but I have a bash script to automate all those tasks. Yeah, I'm a lazy guy. I can share the GitHub link with you guys. And uh, just FYI, there, I think you already know there is another a Grails plugin which you could install uh, in your Grails 2 version and it'll like migrate to Grails 3. And it'll create a new Grails 3 version with some steps, but I think that will create a new Grails 3 plugin rather than upgrading the existing. So you need to take care of that. Any other questions?
Thank you, everyone.